You'd be Zamar Aleph. 12a. By the Mishnah. Right. Says the Mishnah. Chavili Kash, bundles of straw, the Chavili Itim, and bundle of wood, the Chavili Zridin, and um, a bundle of some other type of produce. A Mesachim Behen, you're not permitted to take the bundle and use that to cover your roof and to use it as Chach. The Kulan Shatirin Kesheiris. However, if they're untied and they're no longer in a bundled format, they then they are kosher, it's permitted and valid to utilize for the Chach. The cooling shares the defines. However, I could go ahead and use bundled, um, bundled uh, straw or anything else for the walls. Um, okay, we'll see. The 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 Gemara will explain. So now, Amar Rav Yaakov says Rav Yaakov, Shema Mina the Rav Tarti. I heard from Rav Yechonon two different halachic statements. Um, uh, one is that of our Mishnah, that one is per not permitted to utilize bundled straw for scha, that is invalid. If someone has a huge straw pile and he goes and he digs out uh, a hole which is the right size for a sukkah, so right now he has a perhaps he has a kosher sukkah, he's got the walls, it's a square hole. He's got the walls. He's got the schach on top of him because it's made out of straw and it's not bundled. Perhaps I might think that's permitted. Ain't a sukkah. It's not a valid sukkah. Now, chada. Now, he's he said two different halachas. One halacha was our mishnah. You can you, you cannot use bundled items, bundled hay, bundled straw, bundled wood for schach. And one you cannot go ahead and dig out a, out of a straw pile to create a sukkah. Now, one of these one of these halachas chadim shum gzeres oitzer. One was because of the decree from the rabbinical decree called oitzer. And oitzer is a storehouse. And Rashi explains that even at times, if something mid the Arisa is going to be permitted, we are afraid that if we, we permit them to go ahead and utilize a sukkah in this manner, we are a little concerned that they'll end up utilizing a different sukkah, which is invalid. In such a case, I'll, so in such a case is, is our Gemara, the Gemara is about to explain, but I'll just explain what Oitzer is, is that, for example, I go ahead and I use a bundle of straw, and I put that on top of my sukkah. A reason perhaps that is invalid, which we'll see in a minute what the real reason is, the, perhaps the reason for invalid is because it is the decree of a storehouse. Because back in the day, that's how they used to, that's how they used to uh, place, that's how they used to create roo uh, roofs back then. They would take um, bundles of straw and they would stack them up on top of the, the beams of the house. And I might go, now, if that is true, and I built a house or a storehouse with a covering of uh, bundles of straw, I did not do it l'shem schach. When you are putting up the schach, you have to have in mind that I'm doing it for shade. At least I'm putting it up for shade. And that's not for shade, it's more for protection. So therefore, that is Xeris Oitzer. That, the rabbis were decreed that you can't use this type of sukkah because I'm afraid you're going to end up utilizing a, 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 a storehouse which was not the, sh the, the as Rashi explains, mm -hmm. that wasn't put up l'shem schach shel tzel. It wasn't put up to, to, to shade. Um, so that's, that was one of the two alakas, well, two alakas we just mentioned. One of the reasons why they're forbidden because of the decree called Oitzer. And one of them was from a different one. This is we saw that we were talking about this previously. This is from the idea that, that you, have to, you have to create it. You have to prepare a sukkah and not have a sukkah from something which was prepared. Now, and Rabbi Yaakov said, I heard from Rabbi, Rabbi, I've heard from Rabbi Yechanan. However, I don't know which halacha gets, I'm not sure which halacha is invalid because of the decree of storehouse. And I don't know which one is, uh, is, is, is invalid because of the problem. You have to, have, you have to prepare a sukkah and not, have, not take it from something that which was prepared. So I'm Rabbi Yirmiya. So again, Rabbi Yaakov heard two statements from Rabbi Yechanan. One is you cannot go ahead and use barrel, um, uh, bundled straw, and one you cannot go ahead and dig out a, dig out a sukkah from a straw pile. And he also heard that one of them was because of the decree of Eitzer, and one was, the, one was from the, 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 um, the biblical commandment. The one is not allowed to, uh, task with also he has to be from, he has to prepare a sukkah and not have it from the prepare. Now, he didn't know how to draw the line between the two, right? Now, Amr Abiyamiya, Nechsiyanan, let us see. Now, Rab Yirmiya is going to tell us that he heard from Rab Chia Bar Abba, and he'll answer the question which goes to which. What's the reason 
in our Mishnah that one cannot go ahead and utilize bundles of straw as pa'amim, because we are afraid at times. Shad <clears throat> Asad, someone's going to come from the field, the Arab in the evening. The Chavilasai al Kisvai, and he has those bundles of straw on his back. Umala umanich al Gabi Sukai And he was just cutting uh, fresh, and so therefore they are mo- they're full of moisture, they're wet. Therefore, and he's going to throw them on top of his um, hut in order to dry them out. And then he's going to change his mind with Sichoch. He'll end up saying, you know what? I don't want them to dry out. I'd rather have them for my Sichach, and he won't touch them and leave them there and utilize them as Sichach. Mm-hmm. And the Torah said, that you have to go ahead and um, and 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 the nimlach, and he changed his mind, and he said you have to go ahead and utilize. And, and the Torah says you have to have a, you have to prepare the sukkah, not something from which was prepared. In this case, he threw the schach on top. He didn't have in mind for it to be schach, and then he changes his mind to use it for schach. That's going to be a problem of the biblical commandment, the biblical law that you have to prepare the sukkah. In this case, he didn't prepare a sukkah. He threw it up. The, he he placed the schach, which is the bundle of the straw, for the reason of drying it out, not for a sukkah. So when he changed his mind, decides to use it as a sukkah, he doesn't have it. He never prepared the sukkah. He's utilizing something which was designated for something else. That would be a problem past the limit also. Now, that's what Rabbi Yirmiyah heard from Rabbi Chia Bar Abba. Now, it ended up being that our Mishnah is not necessarily that case. So our Mishnah must be... Um, now our Mishnah was was not that problem because hold on. Since our Mishnah is going to be the problem of um, the the, uh, the problem with our Mishnah is going to be um, the Gezer of Eitzer. Mishum Tasavim Asay must be left out that the digging out is going the problem. The second halacha which Rabbi Yechanan stated was that one is not allowed to dig out uh, from the straw and create a sukkah, that is going to be a problem of tasa v'loi min ha'asoi. Um, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Now, the, you might be asking that it seems really our Mishnah is the problem is Tasev and Asoy. It seems like that's our case, our Mishnah. A guy comes home, he throws the schach on top, he decides to dry it out, he changes his mind, and he's going to utilize it as a sukkah without touching the schach. And the Torah specifically says it's a problem with Tasev Lemin Asoy. It's a problem of preparing it. Uh, you have to prepare it, not something which was prepared. So our Mishnah is a problem. Our Mishnah is the issue of Tasev Lemin Asoy. Of utilizing something which was already prepared, and not the gezerah, the decree that we're afraid that you'll end up um, using a, a storehouse. So if you look at this, it's not the case. If you look at our Mishnah, our Mishnah doesn't say that he put it on top of the schach, he put it on top of the roof in order to dry it out. It's not our Mishnah. Our Mishnah is the guy came, he wanted to use schach, he threw it on, and he just placed the schach in a uh, bundled form. In such a case, it's not a problem with Haslam and Asli. Because he plans on utilizing that bundle schach. His, his intention when he placed it on the roof was for the sukkah. So our, our mission is not the issue of tasalim and asli. They have to use something which was prepared. Uh, you have to prepare not to utilizing something which was prepared. The only issue with our Mishnah is gezer oitzer. That we're afraid that you'll come to utilizing a, um, a storehouse. Which was which was the roof was set up, was set up not to not for schach. Rather, uh, it was it was not set up for the shame schach, and that is gzeiros oitzer. So that means our mishnah is a problem of gzeiros oitzer, and that leaves the digging out a hole and creating a sukkah out of a straw pile. That is a problem past them and also because as I dig it out. I never placed the, the, as I dig it out, I'm, I'm not creating a sukkah. I'm just removing the inside. And when I walk into the sukkah, I already have a prepared roof on top of me. I never placed the roof on top of me. I never placed a straw on top for schach. Yeah. So, uh, for schach, you use bundles of the, the, the bamboo tied to the bamboo. You know, it's like self-prepared. Oh, that's a very interesting question. But it's not... It's not bundled because it's one layer, right? Maybe that's it's one answer. layer. But Maybe that's the answer. It's tied together. That's a good question. I'm sure there are people that talk about it. I never thought about it. 
um, what Jules is asking is that we use those mats. So I think the answer is they're mats. They're not. They're not bundles. It's not like a whole load of things put together right. on top. I'm assuming that would be the answer. But they're prepared. Well, that's fine. Because oh. the problem is when you place it on top of the schach. Mm -hmm. Also, I'll give you another answer. A very probable answer is that it was these mats were created for 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 schach right. from the, from the onset. No, there's no there's no decree that they're going to throw it up there. Because you don't want it to dry out. There's no such decree. If you're putting a stock up there, you know, if you're putting those mats up there. Um, so, the intent, so there's the intention. Right? There's, intention. Not, there's, no, there's no worry of that someone's going to put it up there without the intention of to use them as stock. Those are extremely expensive. No one's buying that unless they plan on putting it up for stock. Um, now, that that's a pro possible answer. Rabbi, be, come in. Yeah? Rabbi, uh, so uh, one can buy mats at places like Home Depot that are tied with like two wires that yeah. are circled around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those are considered not to be used. The ones that we buy for, for Sukkot have a single monofilament line to, to tie them because apparently that's not subject to Tuma. Right, so you could buy the ones on, yeah, it's a whole different issue. The ones at Home Depot are made out of uh, the wire is an issue. That's, that's a whole different issue. There are some say they could use it if you do it in the right way. I sat on Sukkot utilizing those from Home Depot. If you do, if you do it the right way, you could get away with it. But at this point, the CRC a few years ago said you could utilize those mats. So they're really meant for fencing. They're really fencing mats that you you insert them through your fence in order to block out privacy mats. Um, but if you do them the right way, first of all, you have to double them over because you're not going to get enough shade if it, they're single. Uh, so you have to double them over and you have to paste and you have to place them perpendicular to the beam so they're not resting on the metal. If you pull out the metal, they would still be there because of the beam. The UCRC used to say you're allowed to do it. They, they, they revoked that last year. There, I guess too many people are messing up with it and sitting on the puzzle stop. For one should not use it. Okay, so that's what we're up to. Our Mishnah is because of, when you put it up there, you put it up the shame schach, but we're afraid that you, but, but since it's bundled, we're afraid that you might come to leave it up there for um, drying out or something else, and that'll be a plastic solid series oitzer, and the problem of digging out is because of you are utilizing a already prepared sukkah. Okay. Rabbi Yaakov, we're on the last why, last thin line in Yudvei Zaman Aleph. Rabbi Yaakov, Hacht Rabbi Chia Bar Abba Leish Milei. So why does Rabbi Chia, why does Rabbi Yaakov have the ability to connect the lines between the halacha and the reason, just like Rabbi Rabbi Abba Bar Chana did, Rabbi Chia Bar Abba did? The answer is he didn't hear it. Okay, we're on the first uh, wide line. Amar in the middle. Amar Rabbi Ashi. Um, now Rabbi Ashi asked a question. Um, why couldn't Rabbi Yaakov figure it out himself? Atu Chavile Kash the Chavile Eitzim Shum Gzeres Oitzer Ikum. Sorry, Amr Avashi, he asked the following question. Amr Avashi, Could you really say that the, the problem of, of the bundles of straws in our Mishnah is only because of Xeris Oitzer? It's only because of a decree that we're afraid you end up utilizing a storehouse and not because of the biblical issue of you have to have something prepared, but you have to prepare enough from the prepare. And one that goes ahead, and the other case, of digging out from the straw, digging out of a straw pile, also ika. It's only because of the biblical issue, the mishum gzeres oitzer leka, and not because of the rabbinical issue. No, they both could cross over. So very easily, you could say our mission has both issues. Number one, we're afraid you might come to end up utilizing an oitzer, and number two, it could very well be an issue where I placed it up there for the very well reason of um, the whole reason of um, and, and for the whole reason to dry out, dry out in the other way around when it comes to digging out the sukkah. Uh, digging out the, the straw pile. You also could say either it's because of Taslim and Asli, because I am I have an already prepared bundle here. I'm just removing a uh, pile and I'm removing the inside. Therefore, I didn't really put up the schach. I didn't put up any schach. I just removed the inside. And also, it could be uh, maybe you did it properly and maybe you did shake. We'll see in a minute. You could fix the problem if I go ahead and um, we said this yesterday. I think, that you could, if you have a problem of putting up the schach in the wrong order and this problem from the that you didn't prepare and it's from the prepared, all you have to do is lift it up. And you're fine. So you also could do it with the straw inside, and that we could say is also that we're afraid. You don't we're afraid that you might we're, we're afraid you might not come to do it. So really, the rabbinical and the biblical could go both ways. So Rabbi Yechon and Amr Lacha Hachi Kertani. So Rabbi Yechon is going to answer no. We see in the words of the Bryce and the Mishnah has to be one's biblical and one is going to be uh, a, a a from a um a one's a biblical commandment a one, a issue. One's going to be a rabbinical because the Kertani Ein It says in our Mishnah that bundles of straw you should not utilize for schach. 
That means it doesn't say that it's invalid. It says you shouldn't do it that way. That means to tell you that really, um, the, it's in a bit. Uh, it's telling you that rabbi, the rabbi said you shouldn't go ahead and do it. But biblically, it's not going to be an issue. It says a masachim, but not that it's invalid. If it was to use, utilize the word invalid, that would tell us a much stronger, a much, much, much stronger language. And that would be telling us that it's um, biblical. But in fact, he just said you shouldn't utilize it that way. That is show us that it's derabana. The chachilu who was turning the page at the top of your base, umbud base. I have a question. I have a question. Yeah. We're talking about these bundles of straw. Is it a question of what they're bundled with, or is it a question that they're bundled at all? That they're bundled at all. That okay. They are in a bundle. If you untie them, they'll be fine. If you untie them. But I don't understand how that become, makes them tuma if they're tied and they're the, not. The problem if, if being tied is not a tuma issue. The problem of tied is that we are afraid that you'll, we, will, we, will, we are afraid that you'll end up just utilizing a regular storehouse with a similar roof. As most storehouses back in that day used to have bundled, um, they used to have bundled uh, uh, straw as as a roof. Um, and and the being that you placed it there not for schach, you placed it there as a regular roof to protect you from like anything else. It wasn't there for the shame schach. Wasn't there for the shame of sukkah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, the top of your base on the base first line. Emesach mamishim zeres eitzer. The emesach means that it wasn't. It was a rabbinic issue of the decree. Blaster comes to uh, a storehouse. Hadaraisa shaper dami hasim kani any sukkah. Now hadaraisa shaper dami. However, biblically it's fine. It's only rabbinic. Hasam in the k in the second case when we spoke about digging out from the pile. Hadikani any sukkah. It says it's not a sukkah. It's full stop. Usher invalid. Not going to work. Also, midaraita is also a, it's not going to be a sukkah. So we see um, Rabbi. Um, so we brought down Rabbi Ravash. Uh, Ravash had a question: Why can't Rabbi Yaakov figure? Uh, why, why, according to why are we so certain that Rabbi Yechonon meant to say case A is only the Rabbanon, only a rabbinic issue, and case B is only going to end up is is, is going to be specifically a daraisa issue, a, um, a a biblical commandment issue. And that answer is because we see from the language of the Mishnah, a is only means that you shouldn't do, but if you do it, uh, uh, you may, may not have to be sitting in kosher sukkah because of a rabbinical decree. But but you cannot say it's, it's, it's biblical. And on the second case, it said any sukkah that refers to that the arisa, um, biblically, it's not a sukkah. Here we're three lines down, your base on the base, last one line, Amar Rav Yehuda, which brings us to the fourth one. So uh, 12b, Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Rav. If I take shafts of an arrow, the, the wood part of the arrow, and I utilize that for my schach, it depends what type of which what type of arrow it is. If it's a bechitzin zacharim, meaning that the metal the metal part of the arrow, the arrowhead has an indentation in it, and the and the, um, and the wood part of the arrow uh, has an extra piece of wood for it to be inserted into. The metal, the, the metal arrowhead, then it's going to be kosher. Because at that point, it's going to be a flat, it's not going to be makabal tuma, even though it's an arrowhead, which really means that it's a kli, it should fall under the category of a kli, but it's called pshute kli eights. Pshute kli eights means a flat um, board of wood, and flat board of wood will not be makabal tuma. And because there's no kli kibo, there's no part of that, that wooden shaft that could uh, contain anything, because the extra piece is going outwards. And that is going into the arrowhead. However, benikevis psua. This if it's the opposite, that the the metal arrowhead has the extra piece, has sort of the screw that goes into the shaft of the wood, and meaning the shaft of the wood has an indentation inside of it to accept and be able to for the arrowhead to be locked onto the shaft. Then it has a base cable. It has something that could contain something, and then it will be then it will be possible. So if you're using arrowheads, uh, sorry, arrow shafts, two. Uh, put on your sukkah, depends what type it is. Now, Zacharim Ksher Pshita. Now, Zacharim, that's obvious. Mao the same on Nigzar Zacharim Atu Nekevis Kamash Talam. Our answer is why you mention anything about Zacharim? They're flat. If they're flat, everyone's going to agree that there is not going to be Makabal Tuma. And that we said, you no, know, maybe we're afraid that it's a, we'll have a rabbinic decree on our hands, that you can't use the the shaft that is not Makabal Tuma in case you might end up using the type of the shaft that is Makabal Tuma. Ashvalan, the Chiddush is that it's fine and you could use such an hour head that is just flat with no indentation into it. An hour shaft. Why do you have to come and tell me that the, the literally the female 
uh, arrow shaft. However, the arrow shaft that has an indentation in it, to, and it's a base kibble, it could it could contain something. Shita, that's obvious. Answer is now the same. A base kibble also ilamalis loishme kibble mashmalon. That I might think that a uh, a, a base keyboard, something that comes to accept something, that once it's inserted in, it remains there forever. Once you insert the arrowhead, usually, into the sh into the shaft, you're never going to remove it. It's never meant to be removed. That's not called the base keyboard. It's not called something which accepts something, because you're never taking it out. Once it's in, it's there forever. Um, therefore, I might think that that's not called the base keyboard, and it will not be Mikabal Tama, and therefore you could use it for Tzchak. And therefore, we specifically have to say that the female uh, arrow shaft, the one that has a base keyboard that's, that has an indentation in it, is going to be usher, is mikabotoma, and we don't say that since you place it in there forever, it's not going to be mikabotoma. Amar Rabba Barakana, Amar Rabbi I'm about to say three sayings in, in the name of Rabbi Yechon. Schacha ba'anitzei pishtan. If I end up, if you use, um, if I if I place uh, schach on top, if I use a combed flax for my schach, psula, that is going to be pasuk. But uh, now Rashi explains the reason why it's going to be puzzle is because of the issue that's Mikabal Tuma. At this point, already it's called a kli, it was combed, we could end up utilizing it already. It's not just a plain piece of flax lying in the field, it could be utilized for something. Therefore, it's going to be Mikabal Tuma. Happens to be that the Pene Yeshua adds on over here that he doesn't understand why the reason has to be because it's Mikabal Tuma. The, the Pene Yeshua explains that perhaps the reason could be that. It, you're going to, you might end up putting it onto the roof in order to dry, just like we had the issue before when it came to the um, uh, we had on the previous one, but the previous uh, folio that, that just like as the problem is by the, the by the drying out the bundles of, of uh, wheat, and it makes more sense because then it would be at, perhaps that would be more in line with our mission. <clears throat> but in, in any case, it is going to be puzzle. But what's the pishtan kshera with plain stalks of flax? That is going to be kosher. It's just a plain flax. It's just, just a plain stalk. And can't be utilized for anything. It's not, it's not makabal tuma. Therefore, it's kosher. But hoshni pishtan any deamahu. However, this hoshni, which we, we don't know yet what it is, in this state, it we don't know what the Rav said. I don't know what the halacha is now. But hoshni asman any idea. And the one that said this over said it happens to be. I don't know what hoshni means myself. So that remains a mystery. Now manav shah. E now we're going to say this follows. E daik vlay nifid hoshni karile. Now. He's not sure of which way it goes. It is that if it's crushed flax, but it's not combed, is that called hushni? But um, soaked and not crushed is called hushni. Or is it that um, also uh, if it's if it's soaked and it's not crushed, it's all called hushni. We don't know. The point is that we have no idea what exactly hushni state is. Now, Amr Rav Yehuda says, Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda, Hani Shusei Vishvatsrei Vesachem Behen. These very wide leaves, one is permitted to go ahead and um, utilize as chach. Abai Aymer, Vesusei Mesachem, Vesvatsrei Le Mesachem. Also different types of, of, um, of, the, of, of the type of leaves, one are you permitted to, and one you're not permitted to. Now, um, my timer. What's the reason why Shvatsri one one cannot go ahead and utilize for schach? My timer. Kivan the sare rechayu shvek leinafufku like lehu in venafik. We're afraid that it gives off a very offensive odor, and people are going to abandon the sukkah and walk away from it because it, the smell is so bad. Okay, that is the reason why you can't. If any, uh, so meaning you just you cannot use bad smelling schach. Okay, we, we turn already to, to the top of 13a, Yud Gimel Amad Aleph, on the, we're up to the last three words on the page, uh, on, on that line. So the top mm -hmm. of Yud Gimel Amad Aleph. Amar of Hanan, Barava, Hani, his maybe he gay, a type of a thorn, or a type of, uh, and also um, some type of um, a bush or something. The Sachin Bahem, by Amar, you permit it to go ahead. And go and 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 utilize them for schach. By Emer, the his misachin, the higi nilay misachin. By Argi, no one type of the thorns you could, and maybe the higi is a type of vine or something. One cannot go ahead, or some type of a bush. One cannot go ahead and use a schach. My time, why cannot go and not use this schach? Even the nasri chafai, because we're afraid the leaves are going to fall off and shavak levinafik, and it's going to cause you to leave because you don't want leaves in your soup. It's not so good. So therefore, you can't use anything again. So it's another rule: one cannot use a type of a that 
that the leaves shed very easily. Um, where I grew up, they used to use pine a lot. In Montreal, they use pine from, from evergreens. And I know that's all, it sheds a lot, but. I'll bet that's a lot of pine needles in your suit. For yeah, sure. so they never, no one ever complained about it. So it happens to be that I used to deliver it with this guy. So I used to go around delivering the schach. Um, and one time his daughter, and used to be in front of his house, would be piles and piles, like, be doubled. It would be, I was a little kid, it would be way above my height. Like, and used to play in it. And his daughter lost her shoe in it. <laughs> until it was found as it fell into one, some, someone's soup on Sukkot. <laughs> so. Okay, Amar so, Rav Gidel Amar Rav. So says Rav Gidel says Rav, who afakusa the dikla. These are the offshoots of the palm, of a palm tree. Meaning, uh, at the on the bottom of the palm tree, there would be these shoots that should come out, and they would really in like a lulav, and they're bundled on bottom. They're all connected on bottom. Nesachen behu. It's permitted to go ahead and utilize them as tach. Af al gav im lo dagidi agid. Even though we have a problem here, they are uh, they're 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 bond they're bound they're bond they're bounded by, naturally by themselves they're bound and we said something which is bound you can't use a schach, but since it's not you it's not from a human hand that bounded them rather it's from nature it's permitted and also afgad the other agadlu igid bechad loy shmei loy shmei agad and um, and also that something which by itself is bound together is not called bound until you take something else and you end up adding it to it. Amrav Chesta, Amravina, Bar Shilna, Hani, Dukri, Dekani. It's also two types of reeds that grow together from the same stock. Even though they're combined, still it's not a problem because they're bound naturally. The same thing that um, since it's you, it's together, it's bound together as one, and is bound by itself. It's not called being bound until that's called only called bound until you end up adding an additional item to it. Tanim hachi kinim v'doikrin misachim b'hem reeds, and doikrin is the reeds that we mentioned before. Is permitted to use aschach kinim pshita kanim is just reeds. Of course, you're permitted to utilize that. Aim a kanim shal doikrin misachim. What we meant to say is that the reeds of this doikrin. Because they grow together, they grow bound naturally. It's permitted <coughs> to use the maschach. The Amar Chesta Amar Avina Bar Shila, Hani Mirirsa de Agma. These bitter herbs of uh, of the march of, of of the swamplands, the marshlands. One is permitted to use them as mara on Pesach. Now, on that we have a question. Mesve Azov. Now the Azov was. The, um, whatever it says as it means that it should be bound together. You have to take a bunch of things and bind them together. Right? This was by the Para Aduma, uh, and now we learn from there. Azov like Azov, yeah, you have You has to be a uh, whatever the Azov is, but not the high step or something. The Azov, but not a Greek one. Vlay Azov Kaichli, and not from a different country. Vlay Azov Midbari, and not the Arabic one or the desert one. Vlay Azov Roimi or the Roman one. Vlay Azov Sheishle Shem Leva or any type of Azov that has an additional name to it. You have to get the type of um, the type of foliage that is called as and that's it. That is what you have to use for the paraduma. So now we have a question. How could the marasa de agma, the bitter herbs of the marshlands, be allowed to be used for uh, marar? It has an additional name to it. And just like by the by the by, by what by the paraduma, the branches by the paraduma, it couldn't have any an additional name to it. Same thing should apply to the uh, anything we had an additional name to Added onto it is forbidden. We should have the same thing by the mar. So we have two. We have a few. We'll see. Well, at least one answer. Amar Baya. The answer is kol nishtan eshmai koy nimat and tayra uba ayisa tayra have kpido leha bidu eshay say shame of levaya. That anything that had a name added to it prior to the Torah being written, when the Torah says it has to be this item, it has to be that item, and specifically that item and nothing else. So when it came to the Ezoiv, it had to be a specific Ezoiv and not an Ezoiv Raimi and not a Greek one and anything else that had an additional name to it because all those names were applied to it before the Tyra. So the fact that the Tyra pointed out it has to be this, it's got to be that. However, when it came to the Marasa Dagma, the bitter herbs of the marshland, that was only at, that was a type of, some type of foliage which was, I don't know, discovered years after the Tyra was written. So when the Tyra says it has to be Mar, it didn't come to exclude that. 
because no one the Jews the Jews never knew of, of such an item. So the Torah said Mar it wasn't saying specifically the Mar that you know and not the Mar which you'll find in the future. It says specifically Mar and not any other type of Mar that you know from the past. So in the future when you discover new Mar, the Torah never said that you cannot include that. Um, okay, now says Rav, that's one answer. Amrahani Marisa Stama Shamayu. Rav said that no, really this type of Mar is called Mar. It's just called Mar. That's it's real by a lot. Uh, that's what the, I don't know what you want to say, the scientists call it. That's a scientific name, it's called Mara. The reason why it's called the Mara of the marshland is just a nickname, sort of, because it's found in the, in, in, the, in, in the swamps. However, that is not uh, the pro, that is not a problem at all with what we said, that when the tire says something, uh, when the tire says something, it means this and nothing else, because it is Mara. It's just a nickname that we throw on the, uh, the type of, to, to, to specify where you could find it. So we're going a little further. Amar of Chesta, Igud Bechad Loishmi Agat. That if I bind some, if I if I have to, uh, if the Torah says that you have to go ahead and, and and get something bound or bind something, it's not called a binding until you have three of them. So the Torah says go bind. It says by the Agud, you have to go ahead and get three leaves and bind them together for the Paraduma. Yeah, you have to go bind it. That means at least a minimum of three. Shnaim machlekes. However, two is an argument. Rabbi Yosi v'Rabbanon. We have a machlekes between Rabbi Yosi and Rabbanon. Tanan, because uh, we learn mitzvahs ezayv shloishim klochim uben shloishig vun. That the mitzvah ezayv by the paraduma, you have to have, uh, collect three roots, and each of those three roots have to have three stems of leaves. Rabbi Yosi Eimer mitzvahs ezayv shloishig vun. That the mitzvah is that it has to have three stems. V'shirav shnaim. However. If what happens is is that it ends up uh, like falling off, and you're left with just two, it's still going to be kosher on, when you have two left. Your gerdomav kol shuhu, and let's say I took, um, I have my, my 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 stems left over. That we say that the the name of binding is still there as long as I just have, still have a a, a a bit a bit of a, a stump of my stem, uh, and a, a stump of the root. The Gerdom of Kolshu, fine. Kosakotaitan midishiar of Shnaim. Now that we say that if it's left over, it needs, if there, if, if, if I bind, if I originally had three, then it went down to two, it's still kosher, tichlase, nami Shnaim, paritani shleishel mitzvah. That really, the halacha is, is that you need two. That is the, uh, the, the, the least you can have. And the three is just to make it as a mitzvah, it's just to sort of enhance it. So that would tell us that Rabbi Yossi holds that two is called binding, so that would be the two, um, and, and that he's one who held two. Mid Rabbi Yosi shleisha le mitzvah, the Rabbanon shleisha le akiv. And since Rabbi Yosi shleisha is the mitzvah, the Rabbanon is three to ma'akiv. Meaning, according to Rabbi Yosi, you need three for the mitzvah, but two is the minimum for for to, to actually fulfill the rabbinical commandment of binding. You need at least two. Better to have three. According to Rabbanon, it's no less than three. If you use less than three, it's going to be ma'akiv, and you do not fulfill the obligation. Okay, we're gonna end here. That's all I prepared to. Sorry, it's ten minutes early. Um, it's okay. All right, any questions? Guess not. All right, everyone.